California. Welcome to The Internet Says It's True, a show where we learn something new every week, part of the WCBE podcast experience, and I am happy to have you here. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode where we dug into some early civil rights history. I like to keep the topics on this podcast diverse, and sometimes we talk about serious topics like that. Sometimes we talk about food. For example, I have a very specific taste for mint Oreo blizzards from Dairy Queen. Maybe one day we'll have an episode about that. And if you listened to last week's episode, you know what I'm talking about. But today, today we'll be exploring a lighter topic, and we've got a celebrity guest, actor, screenwriter, and producer Michael Hitchcock. Michael will be joining us for the quick quiz here in a bit. Now, let's find out this week's topic. Hey, Michael, it's Marty. I came across a story that as soon as I saw this, uh, I thought about the podcast. It's a funny story about how the origin of the name Hollywood came about. Uh, I'll go ahead and email you the link. Like I said, I I thought of the podcast when I saw it, I thought it might make a good episode, which, by the way, uh, I'm loving it. So keep them coming. Thanks, Marty. Uh, I got this link and I don't know this story. I've heard a different story about the origin of the name Hollywood, but not this one. It reminds me of the episode we did about how Evo Knievel got his name. It came from a conversation like this. We'll get there, but first, let's talk about one of the first things most people think of when they envision Hollywood. The Hollywood Sign. It's one of America's icons. People come from all over the country and all over the world to get their picture taken with the sign in the background. The sign itself has a pretty interesting history. It was erected in 1923 on Mount Lee in the Hollywood Hills as an advertisement for a real estate development, and it originally said Hollywood Land. Developers Woodruff and Schultz paid $21,000 to have the sign erected. The giant 50-foot tall letters were adorned with lights, 4,000 bulbs in all. Underneath them was a giant searchlight to attract even more attention. A full-time maintenance man lived in a nearby shack to change the bulbs. It was meant to be a temporary advertisement, and it was built to last only 18 months. But it was so popular, especially since the rise of the golden era of film was happening at the same time, that they decided to keep it up. In 1949, the word land was removed to make the sign represent the whole area instead of one development. And by the 70s, the aging and dilapidated letters were replaced with permanent ones, with money donated by nine donors, including an eclectic mix of Gene Autry, Hugh Hefner, Andy Williams, and Alice Cooper. The undeveloped area, now known as Hollywood, was an open agricultural area known as Coanga Valley. There was an adobe hut, but not much more. It was around 10 miles west of Los Angeles and was filled with thickets of bushes and cacti. There were nearby orange groves and barley fields, but other than that, the only notable thing that had happened there was at the Coanga Pass, where there had been a pair of notable battles between settlers and Mexican authorities. This is where we meet the Wilcoxes. Harvey Wilcox and his wife Data bought 120 acres of ranch land in 1887. It's interesting to note here that I also saw Mr. Wilcox referred to as Harvey Henry Wilcox, Harvey Henderson Wilcox, Henry Wilcox, Harry Wilcox, and Horace Wilcox. We'll just stick with calling him Harvey for now. That land had been purchased from H.J. Whitley, a man who had developed a hundred other towns, and Whitley had purchased this large 480-acre chunk of land from rancher E.C. Hurd. The Wilcoxes had bought 120 acres and planned to ranch on the land. The problem was they weren't ranchers. They didn't know how to ranch. Eventually, they decided to develop the land and sell lots. Later, we'd learn that Data had plans to develop it into a religious community. She was a strict prohibitionist and offered a deal that she'd donate land to anyone who would build a church. And it was the Wilcox's deed where we first see the name Hollywood in an official capacity. There's a handbill with a map that calls it Hollywood and displays a neighborhood layout of what the community was to become. It's dated 1887. Around 20 years later, the blossoming film industry moved to the West Coast and films started being made in Hollywood. Most of the patents surrounding motion picture technology at the time were held by Thomas Edison in New York, and filmmakers started moving west to avoid legal troubles in Edison's patents. In addition to that, the year-round sun, favorable climate, and abundance of mountains and ocean provided a prime atmosphere for creating realistic movie sets. The term Hollywood became synonymous with the motion picture industry. 
Between the 1920s and 1960s, Hollywood experienced what is commonly called the Golden Age. It saw an abundance of experimental filmmaking and technological advances like adding sound to moving pictures and electric lighting. This developed into some of the styles of film we still enjoy today. Large studios like MGM, 20th Century Fox, and Paramount created an entire industry that the world would enjoy. People all over the globe were paying attention to what was happening in Hollywood, California. But where did they get the name? We'll explore that after a brief word. If you're traveling this summer, hiking, or even just plan on spending a lot of time around the home, Scotty Vest is a company that got its start on Shark Tank and has continued on with great success. I learned about them from other friends who travel like I do because they're really the perfect clothes for traveling. From lightweight shirts to hoodies to jackets, they're packed with pockets and designed with commuting in mind. Give them a look. It's scottyvest.com. And just because you listen to this show, you get 15% off your order. Enter promo code TELLME, all one word, T-E-L-L-M-E. That's scottyvest.com, promo code Tell me. So you all know that I have become super passionate about virtual presentations and making your virtual presentation the best it can be. And they're not going anywhere because, as you know, I had two shows last week from right here in my basement. Uh, you're still being asked to work on Zoom and show up virtually on Zoom. You might as well take some effort into making sure you look good. Even if you're not doing like magic shows like I am via Zoom, you want to make sure that you're presenting yourself in a way that lets people know you've got yourself together. You're going to want to check out Virtual Presenter Course. They have an easy to follow set of courses that teach you everything from lighting to sound to backgrounds and more. They'll teach you how to set up your home broadcasting so you'll stand out in your next online meeting. They've agreed to allow me to give you 20% off of your order. Just go to virtualpresentercourse.com 30 and the discount will be automatically applied. The link is in the show notes. You're going to love this course. We've talked about the iconic Hollywood sign. We've talked about the founding of the area. We've even talked briefly about the film industry. But where did the name come from? It turns out this answer was harder to figure out than I thought it would be. I found at least five main theories. The first one, and the one that I had heard before, was that Data Wilcox, who came from Ohio, was on a train back east and sat next to a woman who chatted with her about her vacation home in Illinois, in a state she called Hollywood. And she loved the name and decided to adopt the name for the community they were planning back in California. This is the official story according to historians Gregory Williams and Bruce Torrance. In some versions of the story, the woman on the train is from Scotland, in some versions she's from Ohio, and yet another version of the story, Data got the name from her friend Ivar Weed, who lived in a place called Holly Canyon at the time. Then there are theories that the name came from the fact that the ridge of mountains where Hollywood is located was covered in holly bushes, so Data chose the name Hollywood. Yet another theory comes from a book in the 1930s that claims Mrs. Wilcox chose the name to mean the mass of the holy wood of the cross. All of these stories are hotly contested by Hollywood's residents, but none of these stories have the credibility of the last one, and the strange part is that this last story is the one that sounds fake. It's the one that sounds like a joke. This final story, the most interesting, predates all the others and is the only one with a little bit of proof behind it. It even predates the Wilcoxes. It goes back to H.J. Whitley. If you remember, this is the man who sold the land to the Wilcoxes. We know this story because it's recorded in Whitley's diary dated 1886. He and Mrs. Whitley were newly married and spending their honeymoon traveling by horseback along the foothills of the Cahuenga Valley. They decided to ride to the top of one of the hills where they encountered a Chinese man in a wagon. He got out of the wagon, bowed at them, and they politely asked him what he'd been doing. In broken English, the man replied, up early, work hard, holly wood. He meant that he was hauling wood. That's what his wagon was full of. But Mr. Whitley and his bride rode on, quote, wondering what the stranger meant. He decided then and there he would buy the land and name it Hollywood. He had developed towns all over, and this would be his next project. The next day, the Whitleys rode back to the ranch and bought 480 acres from the rancher, Mr. E.C. Hurd. Whitley became known as the father of Hollywood, and the rest is history. 
Now it's time for the part of the podcast where I call a friend, and today we've got a very special guest, Michael Hitchcock. He's an actor, producer, and a writer. He can currently be seen on Black Monday, Space Force, and Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. But you know him from all of his projects he's done over the years. We're talking Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, Best in Show, Mad TV, Bridesmaids, Glee. I mean, the list just goes on and on. And uh, I am super happy to have Michael here with us today. It's been uh, a few years since we've seen each other. I know. We used to go get some to eat whenever you came into L.A. I, it's been so long since I've been to L.A. And to, to give uh, our listeners an idea of how long it's been, I think the last time you and I hung out, you were working on Glee. You were you were That's a right. co-executive producer of Glee. And um, so that was, what, six years ago? Probably? So, yeah, probably. Probably. Really? Um yeah, I remember we went and got hot dogs, and then you showed me around the, the set, which was an incredible experience for me. Really enjoyed that. Um, and what have you been working on lately? Uh, lately, I've been acting on uh, Showtime's Black Monday, which is a great show, um, Emmy-nominated for uh, several of the actors on it. It's very, very funny if you don't watch it. I think you'd really like it. It stars Don Cheadle, and he's hilarious. And uh, I'm going to be in a new comedy coming up on Netflix called The Woman in the House, which is a takeoff on the movie The Woman in the Window, starring Amy Adams. So that's coming up, too, at some point. Um, and then before that, I was doing Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I was writing, producing, and acting on that. And uh, currently, I'm writing a script that I hope to sell a little later on this year. This may uh, be a common question that, that you get all the time, but currently, what is currently your favorite thing to do? Uh, is it writing, producing, acting? Probably crying in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I think I spent all of 2020 doing that. If, if you, um, you made it through 2020 pretty well, and I do have to say, <laughs> um, we talked on the phone early in the pandemic. Yeah. You called me very kindly to just to check in. And, 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 uh, and so it's nice to be talking to you to, on, the, on, the, on the end of the pandemic. But you handled the, the pandemic really well because you had a bunch of projects already in the can that came out during yeah. 2020. They did. They came out. Yes. Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar came out. Um, well, that came out this year. Yeah, that one's um, that one's new. But but yeah. Space Force came out during yeah, the, the pandemic. And yeah, Black Monday did, too. Um, but um, yes. But what kept me to go back to your original question, what's been the most fun during this whole time is there was a group of us mostly based in L.A., but some out in other cities. And we adapted a game that you can play in your living room called Mafia. And we adopted it to Zoom and we played it every week. So it felt like you were seeing your friends because you were, you were seeing them, you know, on the, on your computer screen. And uh, we would play Mafia sometimes for three hours, this you is... know, a night, <laughs> uh, not every night, but like once a week. Um, it's still so, a yeah, lot. We, yeah, and you're serious lot. about it. Cause you told me you're, you're actually, you're actually going traveling to visit a friend you were playing one of some of the friends you were playing Mafia with in person. Yeah. Yeah, some of the people we've never met in person, we've just met online, but we're all meeting up um, very soon and hanging out for a weekend. So I'm I'm very excited about that. That's pretty great. So That's it'll be like a, a, yeah, a reunion and we've all been vaccinated. So everybody's happy and ready to go. It's very similar to what I did with my friends on Zoom during the pandemic, except for without playing a game and just drinking. That's basically well, all we that's did. What, you know, that's what everybody did at the beginning. Yeah. And I remember I did too. And then I thought like, oh my God, I don't know if I can spend every week, you know, drinking and complaining. <laughs> that's <laughs> and that's so what it was. It kind of was. And so once we adapted this game, then it became like, it was fun. We laughed a lot and, you know, it was, it was great. And then every once in a while, somebody get mad at each other. Then you'd have to call the person and apologize. Oh, no. Because, you know, like, you voted me off early and you always vote me off early. And so you have to kind of get those things out of the way. I Googled it the other day because I was curious if that's something yeah. that my friends would would dig doing. It's fun. Um, yeah. For those of you who have never played Mafia, it's sort of like Werewolf, which a lot of people also play. It's kind of a cousin of that. And if you haven't done either one, it's just fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'll look. I think that my, my friends might dig it. Uh, we've yeah, just done good. I've just recorded this entire episode about this topic. So our listeners already know the answer, but you haven't been listening. So here this is going to be your first question. And for this question, we are playing for a Facebook profile picture change. So if you get it right, I'll change my profile picture to a person of your choosing for a day. 
If you get it wrong, oh, you have to change yours to a person of my choosing for a day. Is that? I don't. I don't know if I agree to that. Is that? Well, the, these are these are high stakes. Okay. Now, but I don't know who you're going to choose. Let's say I don't want you to choose Hitler. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare okay. choose anything that would be detrimental to your career. But I also know how not seriously you take your social media, <laughs> and so that's it true. It, I'll choose something that is congruent with your career. Okay. All right. Um. And and so and, and I'm not sure who, who that'll be, but it might be. Uh, It'll be something non. <laughs> I'm not going to okay. get you any trouble. It won't be anything. Yeah, yeah. I don't want something like that. Okay. The story of how Hollywood got its name is one that's been disputed. Hmm. Which one of these stories is one that's commonly believed to be the true one? So there are commonly several believed, but not necessarily but, true. But not necessarily true. So in this episode, oh. we do go through uh, the common, some of the common stories. So I've chosen three, and one of them is one of the common stories. The other two are not. Okay. A, a Chinese man hauling wood explained Holly Wood to H.J. Whitley, the man who originally purchased the ranch land. B, the area was known to be haunted by a female ghost who locals referred to as Holly. Or C, Benny Goodman, the composer of Hooray for Hollywood, needed something to rhyme with neighborhood. Okay. I've never heard of any of these before. <laughs> So the one I would have to say sounds like the most. I'm going to go with Benny Goodman. The answer is A, the Chinese man hauling wood, which just goes to show that something I said in the episode, the least believable one is probably the true one. Um, well, so I've never heard any of those. What, so, are the ones yeah. that, what are the ones that you have heard? Well, I've heard, I think, the real one, which it was named after Hollywood Land, which was a reality company. Yeah. So, so that's what I heard. That Well, that's true. But this goes yeah. back to even before that. So how did the Hollywood Land realty, the the um, Oh, I the don't know, Michael. Apparently, the Chinese man told somebody. <laughs> so this is this is the craziest story. H.J. Whitley yeah. was this guy that bought the land from the rancher in the very beginning. And right. He said, what are you doing? And the man said, Holly, I Hollywood. And. Oh. Now, that sounds like a joke, and it sounds like a fake story. But of all the stories about where they came up with this name, that one is actually documented in his journal from 1886. Well, it sounds incredibly racist is it's, what it sounds. It's, it's, well, you know, it's him but describing his true. interpretation okay. of what he heard. Um, right, fair enough. Yeah, so anytime that you drive by that sign, Michael, I want you to just think that this is uh, apparently making fun of a Chinese man. Um, and... Uh, well, I'm not sure I'm going to do that, Michael. I'm, I, um, and I don't like that I have to change my picture for that. Let's. But anyway, um, let's, um, oh, you know, I was a you know I was a universal tour guide when I when I went to college out here. I when I went to UCLA, and one of our jokes because we would do jokes on the on the thing, you would be pointing things out and this and that, and you go, and what do you think that barn was built of? And you go, Hollywood. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, and people would laugh and laugh. Anyway. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> so anyway, that's one of our universal tour guide jokes. It sounds like one. It sounds mm -hmm. like one. So they, yes, they do. Do you have a, a photo of you when you were a universal tour guide? I do. That's going to be your profile photo for a day. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. That's... I don't. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> the, I, the photo I is crazy? I, I saw it. I have it not too long. Yeah, it is. Okay. I look like I'm very interested in talking to someone. You were. Okay. You you couldn't wait to tell them your joke about the Hollywood. <laughs> question yeah. number two. For this question, if you get it wrong, you have to tell me about the worst thing to ever happen to you during a performance, whether live or in front of a camera. If you get it right, I'll tell you one of my horror stories. In the youth of Hollywood, a Frenchman named Paul De Longpre created the very first tourist attraction in Hollywood on the corner of what is now Hollywood Boulevard and Cahuenga. Which one of these was it? A. A swimming hole complete with a water slide and roller coaster. B. An elaborate rose garden with 4,000 roses. Or C. A marijuana dispensary. Wow. Well, the one that sounds ridiculous is marijuana dispensary. So I'm not, I, I'm not going to fool for that. I mean, I, I don't, I can't, it can't be that. Um, but it probably will be. Uh, boy, the swimming hole and sounds amazing. Frenchman, I think, would do the roses, but 
I'm going to say, I'm going to say swimming hole. The answer was the Rose Garden. You should trust trust your Frenchman instinct. Oh, yeah. Well, that does sound lovely. Uh, it does. And I only chose marijuana dispensary because my last time out there, I was I was struck with how many there were uh, on in that neighborhood. Right. Well, now it's legal all over California. So yeah. there's not that there's not as many, oddly. Um, there's more. Just it's the, it's the lost more. its novelty. Well, it's yeah, it's not so naughty anymore. Right. Um, but back then it was I think everyone was trying to get get on the ground floor of the dispensary thing. So there were a ton of them. Yeah. So but then but then again, back in the day, maybe marijuana was legal and they used it, you know, for snuff or something. So I, I thought I didn't want to rule that one out. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, this was this was probably before or maybe the same time as as William Randolph Hearst's um, vendetta against marijuana. Right. But I see I love water parks, so I was just hoping that was true about the first one. Yeah, I don't know where they'd put it. If you look, if you look on that corner now on a map, I, I looked it up, and that's now the home of a souvenir shop and a Popeye's chicken. Yes, it is. I know that corner well. I've been been down it many times. It, um, but yeah, but back then there was a ton of land, so they they have room for all of that stuff. Yeah, you know, when I wrote this question, I thought the swimming hole would be too impractical or too um, impossible. But you're right. There was so much land back there. It could have been. It could have been. Uh, well, it makes perfect sense. If there's a Popeye's chicken across the street, why wouldn't you put a swimming hole right there? Absolutely. Now, uh, am I saying Coenga right? Yes. <laughs> that, that was Coenga. the one where uh, I, I remember like the first time I drove there and I was I was on the phone with my friend who who also lives in that area. And I was reading the street name to him. He's like, where are you at right now? And I'm like, I'm in La Cienega. <laughs> right right and, and like you know so sometimes they don't they're not pronounced the way that they so Kah- well, the one the Kah- one everyone Kah- mixes up there's in beverly hills there's uh rodeo drive but it's spelled rodeo so that's when you know someone's from out of town rodeo drive rodeo. but it's rodeo it's much 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 fancier if you say rodeo so do you by have- the way i'm I, i'm looking most people can't see this so i'm looking at our little zoom things I look like I'm a, a sad ghost because of my lighting and you're like perfectly lit. <laughs> no one's ca- no one's comparing our and uh, and uh, well, I am this video usually only goes to to Patreon. We may release one of these questions out on Facebook or something, but oh, no, n- definitely not. All right. We'll make them pay <laughs> anyway, for it. Keep going. We'll make them pay keep for going. it. Uh, yeah, they got to pay for this. <laughs> this is amazing trivia. So do you uh, the about embarrassing things? Yeah. Do you have anything that happened? Oh, so many. I've done so many embarrassing things, but. Um, I'm it doesn't even have to be an embarrassing it. thing. It can be a, a a horror story in some other sense. Well, I'm going to go with embarrassing, Michael, because that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> um, well, you can see it. You can see it in Best in Show. I'm I'm arguing with my. I play a a, a kind of a mean man, a lawyer, a very wound up guy, and I'm at one point um, yelling at my wife backstage at the dog show, and her she it's played by Parker Posey and. Um, I'm I'm screaming at her. At one point, she goes, "Don't spit in my face!" Because I really was spitting in her face accidentally, because I was so close to her, and all the spittle was coming out. So that's number one. And then number two, there's a uh, there's a comedy venue in Los Angeles which I perform at uh, when I have uh, time. It's called the Groundlings, and we do improvisation there. And at one point, I was pretending to be a human tornado, so I was spinning, spinning. I flung myself accidentally off the stage and into the band pit. So oh, no. that was that was bad. Hopefully not too painful. <laughs> so it, it wasn't it was more just like I was so ashamed. <laughs> Cuz I guess I shut my eyes and I, I the next thing I know I was you know on a drum. You just got but, into it. Yeah. <laughs> question you're killing it Michael. <laughs> question 3. The running prize for this question 3 is always one of these stickers. So quick backstory. I the, this is a sticker that says tell me what to google. This was the original name of this podcast. Uh, And then I changed it after the first season. And I got Mm -hmm. these stickers in the same week that I changed it. So these are now collector's items. And you will win one of these if you get this question right. Well, I'm so far, I'm batting a thousand. So I don't think I'm going to get a sticker. You're due. No. And this question is is a little easier, I think. Um, And also, I do have just a special note. I do have official. The Internet says it's true stickers now. So you'll get both. The famous Hollywood sign has been defaced, graffitied, and modified many times over the years. True. Which one of these describes something that's been done to the sign? Now, this one is more than three. This one has a lot of choices to choose from. Okay. A, 
It was covered with Save the Peak by people protesting real estate development. B, it was changed to read Holly Boob by a YouTuber to challenge censorship on Instagram. C, it was changed to Oil War to protest the Gulf War. D, Mm -hmm. it was altered to read Hollywood to honor a a a Hollywood Bowl visit from the Pope. E, the O's were changed to E's to change it to Hollyweed. F, it was changed to support the 1992 presidential candidacy of Ross Perot by reading Perot Wood or G, (laughs) all of the above. I know that two of them are true. So I'm going to say all of the above. You are correct. You get some stickers in the mail. I get uh, stickers. <laughs> yeah, I knew are... about Holly Weed and, and Holly Boob happened not too long ago. Yeah, Holly Boob was very recent. Um, the rest right. of these I had never seen. I this, The rest of these all came from Googling. Um, the, the one that I think is is really interesting is Perot Wood during the Perot. presidential candidacy of Ross Perot. He probably paid good money for that to have been done. I like Hollywood because of the Pope. I thought that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. can you can see the sign from the Hollywood Bowl, can't you? Uh, I well, I don't know if you can, just because it's sort of they're sort of on the same maybe, maybe parallel. We'll, maybe we'll say that he saw it in in his Pope mobile. He could see it from in LAX. Transit. Yes, he could see it in transit for sure. But yeah. in the Pope mobile, just covered in windows, so it's easy to see the scenery around you. Question four. For this question, we're playing for an audio Easter egg. So you're a screenwriter and producer in addition to acting. And for the next project you write, the idea is to insert the phrase Robin's Egg Blue. If you get this question wrong, if you get it right, you'll hear the literal Easter egg in Nest. If you get it right, you'll hear the that. My God. If you get it right, you'll hear that literal Easter egg in next week's podcast here. That's the phrase Robin's Egg Blue. Robin's egg blue. So it'll just be like a little nod to sure. uh, to our listeners. The name Great. Hollywood has been adapted into Yollywood for what non-California hub of TV and film production? A, Atlanta, Georgia. B, Orlando, Florida. Or C, Defiance, Ohio. I don't think it's Defiance, Ohio because I was born there, by the way. Um... They haven't had that many movies shot there. Um, so I hope it's not that one, or I'm going to be very embarrassed. I'm going to have to say Atlanta. That makes sense, y'all. You are correct. It is Atlanta. Uh, I only put Defiance yeah. on the on the list because you're from there. Uh, yeah. Because you were born there. But there was a movie based uh, in Defiance because it was based on the book called The Prize Winner of Defiance, Ohio. Um, it's a great, great film. When was that? And I, I wrote a I pardon. Yeah, when, that's it. Starred Woody Harrelson, and um, it's a great book. It's a, a memoir about a woman who, uh, she back in I think the fifties and the sixties, they didn't have a lot of money, and she would enter these contests uh, where you had to create little jingles and everything, and she won all the time, and so she'd get the prizes, and because they didn't have much money, she'd sell the prizes so they could afford to keep living, and it's a very touching memoir about yeah growing up poor and a mom who, you know, in another world would probably have been, uh, you know, pretty successful marketing person. So yeah, it's a good book. Now, I may have asked you this in the past, but Glee was set in Lima, Ohio. Did, That's right. Did you have any say in that or was that just a coincidence that you're from near that oh, area? No. Yeah, I, I didn't start writing on Glee until season three. I acted on Glee season one. Uh, as a, uh, a a deaf choir coach uh, and a, at a competing school. But yeah, that was decided long before I had anything to do with it. Question number five is for all the marbles, Michael. If you get this wrong, okay. I'm banning you from the show. You'll never be asked on again. Oh, here's your question. What should we be watching on television? Well, I don't know what you should be watching. You want what I, okay. You want me to recommend something? I think, Ooh, I might belch because I've been drinking Coke Zero as we do this, so you might have to edit this out. Um, what I've been watching lately, weirdly, are two shows featuring Gene Smart, the actress. Uh, one is Mayor of East Town, which is an amazing drama. Uh, it's it's just fantastic. And then Gene Smart is also in this comedy called Hacks, and she's very different in both, and they're both fantastic. And I highly recommend them both. 
Awesome. So Mayor of Easttown and Hacks. Yes. And, and then weirdly, uh, on Hacks, she's paired up with a, uh, a young actress uh, named Hannah Einbinder, who in real life is Lorraine Newman's daughter. And Lorraine Newman was one of the original cast members of SNL. So I like that it's now second generation comedy happening. That's great. It's great. Yeah, it's great. And if you haven't already, go watch Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar, which wasn't up for awards because of the timing with COVID and everything, but yeah, was just named. Uh, Hollywood Reporter just said it was one of the best movies of the year so far. So far, yeah. Which we're is, doing good so far. It's halfway through the year. We're halfway uh, through the year and we're still on the best movie. It is very, very funny. It's unapologetically just, it's sort of like Austin Powers meets Bridesmaids. Yeah, um, it's a little bit of both, and it's very fun. And we had a great time shooting it, and I, we laughed so much. So it was it was fun to shoot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for for joining me. Um, where can people learn more about you? Find out more about you. Where where do you want them to follow you? Uh, they can always find me on Instagram at it's at Hitch Michael. Hitch Michael so on Instagram. H i t c h m i c h a e l. All right, man. Thanks for coming on yeah. the show. Thank you for having me, Michael. Well, that's the show for this week. Thank you so much to Marty for the show topic and to Michael Hitchcock for joining us for the quick quiz. I found a little kid and told him I'd punch him in the arm if he didn't read this next part. Thank you for listening to The Internet Says It's True. Don't forget to join up on Patreon if you want to see the unedited video of the guest appearance or to hear bonus episodes. You can do that at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. Also, if you learned something that you didn't already know from the show, please visit iTunes and leave us a review with five stars and a few words. That's the rule. You gotta do it. That helps us a ton because that's how the algorithm works to get the podcast suggested to more people. And that way we can keep learning something new. If the internet says it's true. The internet says it's true. I'd like to thank the Patreon subscribers whose monthly contributions help make this show possible. Sean Brown, Catherine Morgan, Taylor Hurt, Tony Ford, Bryce Swanson, Eugene Anderson, Matt McVeigh, Jim Martin, Joanne Martin, Josh Van Allen, and the show's official emperor, Kick Track. This show is written and produced by me, Michael Ken. The theme song is by Finite Music Forge, and additional music this week was from Aaron Kenny and Dan Lebowitz. All audio clips in this episode are used for education and commentary and used under Fair Use Title 17 USC Section 107. You can listen to past episodes by searching for The Internet Says It's True wherever you get your podcasts, and you can see bonus content at patreon.com slash Kent. 